Praise the Lord. Good morning, my dear friends. Welcome to Daybreak. Every morning is a gift of God. Let's thank and praise the Lord with this choir. Concentrate the light waves, Holy Spirit guide me, make the earth vibrate. Fighting for the will and power, get strong. Feelings change to the sound to the song. You are all I need. I will only succeed to just peace for God to enable his deeds. I pray for the strength to increase each day. Disintegrate the obstacles, show me the way. Okay. 
I am sure the hymn has drawn you closer to God. Now sharpen your ears to listen to today's message. A rich nobleman in a certain village in Europe wanted to leave a legacy for his fellow villagemen. After having consulted many people as to what he could leave as a legacy, this nobleman decided that he would build a church for his people in the village. He made sure that during the construction, no one in the village would be able to see what he was building and he wanted to leave it as a surprise for his village people. The day finally arrived when the construction was completed and the people gathered together for the grand opening of the church. The village people were simply marveling at the beautiful way the church was constructed and they really were thankful for the noble gesture of this noble man. As the people entered inside the church, and as we are looking at the wonderful way the church decorations were done, one person looked in a little more closely and made an observation and told the nobleman, Sir, everything looks so beautiful in this church, except for this one fact. I don't find any lights around here. Don't you think that the church will be too dark if there are no lights provided. And to that, the nobleman looked at the man and pointing his fingers to the walls at the sides, he told him, do you see there are small gaps that are placed at every part of the wall? Well, these gaps are meant for each family in the village when you come to the church to bring a lamp and place it there. Every time a family comes to the church, you are expected to fill up that gap with the lamp of your life. And suppose if you don't turn up that day, that part of the church would remain in darkness. Each of you are expected to be a light in this house of God. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel, John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Anyone who is in Jesus Christ, the light of the world, will be able to radiate and shine the light of God to the people around. Jesus, when he came into this world, became a light for many who were in darkness. People who had lost faith and hope in life were able to experience the light of Christ in their life. And through the Gospel of St. John, Jesus is exhorting his disciples, his followers, to be like Jesus, becoming a light to the people around. We who are living in this world are expected to by our words, by our actions, by our thoughts, radiate Jesus Christ, the light to the people around. Surely, as we live our lives, we know we have moments and times when there are dark situations, times when things are not really clear and good enough. But in all those moments, we are expected to hold on to Jesus Christ, the light of the world, and allow his light to shine in our life. Remember, each of us are part of God's house and we all have a role to play. If we fail to play that role of being a light to the world, then that part of God's house will remain in darkness. Let us not allow such things to happen in our life. Rather, let us always allow God's light to shine forth in our life and thus let us always illuminate God's house with our words, with our actions and with our thoughts that are united with Christ. May this day be a day 
when we discover Jesus, the light of the world more and more and thus allow his light to shine forth for the people. May the name of the Lord be ever praised and may Jesus, the light of the world, bless all of us. Live Jesus. Let's draw these lessons from the message and put them into practice. Saints are model for us, so let us have a glimpse of the saint of the day. Today the church celebrates the feast of Saints Peter and Paul. Peter, the first pope, was a fisherman from Galilee. Jesus invited him to follow him, saying, I will make you a fisher of men. Peter was a simple, hard-working man. He was generous, honest, and very attached to Jesus. This great apostle's name was Simon, but Jesus changed it to Peter, which means rock. You are Peter, Jesus said, and on this rock I will build my church. Peter was the chief or prince of the apostles. When Jesus was arrested, Peter became afraid. It was then that he committed the sin of denying our Lord three times. Fear for his safety got the best of him. But Peter repented totally and wept over his denials. Jesus forgave Peter and after his resurrection he left Peter as the leader of his followers. St. Peter was martyred on Vatican Hill around the year 67 AD. St. Paul is the great apostle who first persecuted the Christians. At the time of his conversion, Jesus said, I will show him how much he must suffer for me. St. Paul loved Jesus very much, so much so that he went through great sufferings to bring the message of Jesus to distant lands. He was whipped, stoned, shipwrecked and even lost at sea. Many, many times he was hungry, thirsty and cold. Yet he always trusted in God and he never stopped preaching. St. Paul died around the year 67 during Nero's terrible persecution of the Christians. Sometimes we realize that our faith is not strong enough. It is then that we can pray to Saints Peter and Paul. They will help us believe in and love Jesus as they did. After having listened to the saint, let us resolve to lead a saintly life. Word of God is the food for our soul. So let us prepare our hearts for today's daily bread. Praise the Lord, dear friends. Welcome to the Daily Bread, a daily reflection on the Word of God. Today is 29th June, the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. The Catholic Church, the Latin Rite, has prescribed the reading for today's Mass, Matthew 16, 13 to 19. First, let me read the passage, then we shall make a reflection on these two great saints. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bariona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the powers of death 
shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, we had been reading Bible passages in the entire month of June, passages that speak about God's love. We have come to the conclusion one more day that the month of June will come to an end. On the 29th of June, the church is celebrating the feast of the star what supposes Peter and Paul. They are martyrdom in Rome. I'm especially happy of this day because it was 51 years ago, that was in 1968, June 29th, I was ordained a priest in Rome, in the chapel of the Pontifical College, Urbanianum. I had the joy, the grace of God, the possibility to study theology and to be ordained on the day of the apostles of Peter and Paul. I thank God for that great gift. Now, coming to Peter and Paul, Peter, we see the confession of Peter as the leader of the apostles. And this man who was called Simon, Jesus changed his name into Peter. And that is the Latin and Greek form of the Aramaic Kephas. Atu Kepha, you are the rock. And that's how you are called. So in, when you translate the kepa into a rock, that is Petra, that is a feminine. So you had to say Petrus, and Petrus has become Peter in English. So ultimately, the word means rock. That is a strong, unchanging, a rock, a solid foundation. And Jesus wanted Peter to be the solid foundation of the church. But then we know that Peter was a weak man. He was afraid. He was not very courageous. He was zealous, he had love for Christ Jesus, he was ready to die, but then he was afraid. And ultimately, he happened to deny Jesus three times when questioned in the courtyard of the high priest. I do not know him. But that was corrected by Jesus in the last appearance. When Jesus appeared to the disciples on the shore of Tiberias, the last question Jesus asked Peter was, not whether you believe. And he doesn't even so even the name Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon, son of John is the weak person. And Jesus knows that he is weak. And only one thing he is asking, of, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Master Lord, you know I love you. The three times the question was asked, and three times Peter declared his love. The love of Peter becomes the solid foundation. Even though he was weak, even though he denied Jesus, took him back, and he became the solid foundation, and he became the first person to announce, proclaim the word of God from the roof of the house where they were living when the Spirit came, when the Holy Spirit came and transformed the, the weak co cowards into courageous apostles and martyrs. Peter is the one who proclaims. And this, this Peter came to Rome and founded the church in Rome. And there, during the time of persecution by Nero in AD 64 sometime, Peter was crucified outside the city, that is in the gardens of Nero in the Vatican. It is there where Peter was crucified and buried that today stands the Basilica of St. Peter in Rome. And the other great apostle, Paul, he was a fanatic. He was a real enemy of Jesus. He wanted to exterminate the name of Christianity. But then he was converted, changed his life through an encounter with Jesus. And then it comes to this, for me, to live means Christ and to die is again. It's no more I that lives, it's Christ who lives in me. For me, whether dead or alive, I live for Christ. I am Christ. And only one thing, Christ should be known. Christ should be made known. That's a person who spent all his life. His conversion took place sometime around 36. And about 10 years he was in reclusion, meditation. And then the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, brings Paul to the front. And then he goes on. A zealous missionary. Incredible the way he went around preaching, testifying, 
to Jesus and how much he suffered and all his sufferings he has recorded in the second letter to the Corinthians. And finally, he was also arrested and beheaded outside Rome. Being a Roman citizen, he could not have been crucified and he could not have been buried or killed inside. So he was killed outside on the Via Appia and there he was beheaded and his body was buried where today stands the Basilica of St. Paul. These two great apostles and today the church celebrates the feast of Peter and Paul. This is a kind of foundation Jesus has laid, the, the faith of the apostles who gave their lives. Paul said, Jesus who loved me and who gave his life for me. And we can say Paul who loved Jesus and gave his life for Jesus. That is what also Peter did. And that's what we are also asked to, to love him, to experience him and to give our lives when needed also for the martyrdom. So to believe and to suffer and to die for Christ, whether dead or alive, we belong to Christ. And that's what the faith tells us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these great witnesses of your faith, Peter and Paul, who experienced your love and who surrendered their lives in testimony to your love. Father, enable us also to live, to believe, and to give our lives for your love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure today's Daily Bread has given you a new insight to the scriptures that you have listened. As we come to the end of this episode, let us once again thank and praise our God with this hymn. in 
conquers the grave. Jesus conquers the grave. Shine the light down and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light down, let the whole world see. Singing for the glory of the risen King. Oh, oh, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to stay. He is mighty to stay forever. Offer of salvation. He wears in conquer the grave. Jesus conquer the grave. Oh yeah, you conquer the grave, Lord. You died and rose again. My dear friends, I really hope the last half an hour has certainly been a blessing to you. Until we meet, stay blessed.